When we mow it, condition it, we want to put it in a wide swath to enhance drying. And uh, even for those that are uh, making hay for sale, we recommend that. Uh, the first 24 hours that uh, alfalfa lays in a wide swath, it does not bleach. It only bleaches when the leaves get dry. So, uh, of course, for a beef cattle man, you don't care whether it's bleached a little bit or not. It does not affect the nutrition anyway. It just affects the marketability of hay to be sold. So we want a wide swath to maximize drying to preserve the starches and sugars in the leaf as much as possible for the animals we're going to feed. We're then going to rake it into a windrow, and then we're going to come and uh, bale that windrow. So one of the most important concepts in drying hay is to put it into a wide swath covering at least 70 to 80 percent of the cut area. Uh, much of the United States has mowed hay and put it immediately into a windrow. The mistaken thought was that because we were conditioning it, we didn't need a wide swath like we used to do before we had conditioners, and that is wrong. We should consider that a wide swath is for drying the leaves, a conditioner is for drying the stems, and we need both as we are making hay. Uh, when we put hay immediately into a windrow, within a few minutes, we're at a very high humidity within that windrow, and it doesn't dry very much anymore. In fact, I think many of us have made a windrow and turned it over the next morning, and it's just as green underneath as it was when we cut it. Those plants that have continued to respire all night, they have broken starches and sugars down and given off carbon dioxide. This means that we're going to have first a dry matter loss, and then secondly, we're going to have a forage quality loss because we're losing the 100% digestible portion of that forage and keeping the fiber and protein and, and other fractions that are not as digestible. Uh, when we've looked at some of the hay prices over the last couple years with hay at $200 a ton, that 4% uh, dry matter loss can amount to about $8 per ton of hay you're making. But then the forage quality loss mounts to about 15 points of relative forage quality. And that's uh, another $20 a ton in terms of the value of that forage if you're buying or selling or and it, we think it's true even if it's feeding your own cattle you can put up higher quality forage and then need less concentrate one of the important uh, characteristics for either grazing or hay making is to have a good dense stand of forage uh, we want to have if if we're harvesting alfalfa uh, we would like to see at least 55 stems per square foot when we are cutting. If we have less than that, then the stand density is limiting yield. We'll see more open spaces in the field. We have more opportunities for weeds to come in, but mainly our yield goes down. Uh, the same thing is true in grassy fields. Uh, and uh, if the, the grass stems are not there, if we have a lot of open spaces, then we're going to have reduced yield because our stand density is low. And so at some point it becomes worthwhile with grasses we can overseed and improve the stand density. Uh, a thin stand may also indicate a lack of uh, nutrients or maybe a need for more fertilizer. And the field should be soil tested to determine. But uh, do consider that when you see open spots in the field, uh, even a foot square, uh, that those are places where there could be plants that could be producing yield that you could be harvesting. Remember as well that as we're harvesting this forage, it costs about the same amount of money to harvest one ton as it does two tons per acre. Uh, what we find is that there's maybe a 15% difference in uh, energy for baling, but if you think about it, mowing costs the same, raking costs the same, and the only major difference is you have to haul a few more truckloads of hay away. But, uh, but do consider that your cost per ton goes down as your yield per acre goes up.